Hey guys, Frank here, your virtual general aviation aviator, and it's like early in the morning. It's 7.30 and the sun is uh, rising over Richmond. I'm at Millionaire and I'm in the Piper Era by V-Flight, the Era 3, and this is going to be an interesting flight because... In this flight, I want to familiarize myself with the error. I've been flying it a little bit. Um, I have have gone through some of the documentation, and I found that I actually really enjoy flying this aircraft. The plan today is to leave Millionaire at Richmond and fly down to Hampton Roads, uh, about 60 nautical miles southeast, and that shouldn't take long. Um, so let's get started. So I'm panning around, and we're looking at the aircraft from the outside. Now, this is uh, going to be this is going to be a little bit more than just a regular flight because if any of you guys are interested in the V flight air. Piper 3, then um, this video might show you what I like about it and, of course, what I don't like about it. All right. Now, let's. they do, they do have a menu. It's a one-page menu here. And with this menu, I can open the doors. I can remove the static elements. And I can put passengers in. Uh, let's see if the if the passenger in the back seat is animated, and they are, and you can see the the weight of the aircraft shifting as I add passengers. Uh, so kudos to to V Flight Air for for doing that. So yeah, on this particular flight, I am not alone. So uh, let's put my weight in. Um, yeah, one seven is good. And let's put a co-pilot in because I am not alone. Uh, female, one, uh, 142, 150, somewhere there about. And a passenger, let's say a um, uh, child, maybe, um, 79, and a, another passenger, at um, at 1:30. All right, so I hope you guys can see this. I know I know this is hard to see because I shoot in 4K and 4K tend to make things smaller. Um, but in, in anyway, I if I needed to tow the aircraft, I could tow it. Uh, let's see. So right now the parking brake is on. Uh, but I don't need the tow it, so I'm going to release the tuck. All right. And looks like I've got my passengers loaded. And look at my fuel. So I got 10 gallons in the left tank and 8 gallons in the right tank. So that's not cool. So let's add a little fuel. Let's put about 20 gallons in both tanks. So the fuel truck is, for all intents and purposes, uh, is out there and or either I'm at the fuel pump and I'm pumping gas okay so I've got that and of course um, these people you know want to avoid the traffic these three people and they're friends um, so this is a VFR flight and I'm not charging them anything I'm just taking some friends of mine from one point to another and they are going to get out but um they but they do have a little bit of baggage that weigh about 45 pounds so that put me right at the top of the envelope all right so what else we got um i can use a glass panel or an analog panel let me get in the cockpit uh so this is the e Echo. This is the E1000 um, glass panel uh, by V Flight Air, and of course I could toggle to the 
to the analog panel just that easy. So, so this time, guys, we're actually going to fly with the glass panel. We're going to fly with the E1000. Um, hide interior glass. So right now, the glass is visible, uh, but I can make the glass invisible. Um, and uh, I tend to like the the realism of having um, whatever challenges a real pilot might have. Um, high passengers interior view. So if I click this, all my passengers would uh, immediately go away. Uh, but let's leave them on. Um, hide on-screen warnings. And I usually, well, that's been off. And I've been okay with it off. Uh, ground equip hot ground equipment, hot Avatab. Now, in an earlier video where I flew both the Just Flight version of this aircraft and the Piper version, uh, and the um, v Fly Air version, I couldn't figure out how to get rid of the Avatab. And this is it right here. So, uh, if I want the Avatab on, then I can, you know, there's no click spot on the Avatab to get it off, but, but it is a menu item. Um, I don't think I need the Avatar for this flight. So I am going to turn it off and and use static items. I've got I've already removed the static items from outside um, using this button here. But yeah, we're going to leave that on and let's get rid of the Avatar. OK, so that's the uh, that's the hold of, of the entire menu. Uh, oh, yeah, they do include a checklist. So if I wanted to use a checklist, I can. Uh, but on this particular flight, I am not going to use the checklist. Um, I keep saying that I'm going to start using the checklist. But when I get ready to do a flight that I know is going to be two plus hours, then I'll go through the checklist. But for for time purposes, I'm going to not go to, through the checklist, okay? So, uh, what else do we have here? Uh, reset the code in dark. Uh, so, I'm not going to click that, but if I, if the plane was running and I want to reset it, I could. Okay, you get the idea. One page, and we've got pretty much everything there. Oh, yeah, that sun is coming up, isn't it? All right, so I started off at 7.30, and my passengers are aboard. Let me um, get my yoke adjusted. All right, so um, even though I'm not going through the checklist, just to show you some things, we'll add some time to this video. So I'm going to pause the simulator so that we don't lose our time because I'm not on real time. And I want to bring up, um, I want to bring up the POH. Slide it over. Okay, so this is the POH for the the V Flight Air pop, um, the V Flight Air Piper, the. Piper Arrow 3. <laughs> and I am blown away about by, by this pH by this POH because you know when you're flying there are certain documents that it that you have to have on board. And the POH is one of them. And you can see where um the POH where notes have been made in the POH. Um of course um the it's been approved by uh, an FAA rep named Peter Peck, Peter E. Peck, Peter E. Peck. How about that? Um, and it's got um, the revisions so that we know that things have been happening in the POH in the aircraft the way they should be. OK, um, you know, this is just uh, great. I've. I don't normally see this in 
aircraft. But to be honest with you, I don't always go through the documentation that come with aircraft, so I can't say that that it actually don't exist in some of my other aircraft. I do get POHs, but they are usually in a form, in a an Adobe form that does not represent what the real POH in the real aircraft might look like. So, and I think this one does. So kudos to V Flight Air for this. Okay, so uh, one of the things that I do like about this POH is um, I can get my V speeds. So I'm scrolling pretty fast and looking. I thought I saw them scroll by there for a second. Uh, there. Let's see, yeah. Okay, let's see. So on the climb, my best my best rate is 90 knots indicated. So um, best rate is VY, and that's 90, and this is climb. So I'm just making some notes here. And my best angle is 78, so that's VX, 78. And um, I like to, let's see, in route, um, I should expect about 104 knots. Okay. And what is the V? Is there a V, uh, a V ref for in route? If it is, I can't think of it. So I'm just going to write in route. 104 and I know that I should have my my power set at 75 percent and um, of course I adjust my mixture according to my height and I think there is um, some reference on the sun visor in this aircraft for there may be some reference I know there's a table in this on the sun visor okay um, so let's do approach. Okay, approach. And looks like approach. Um, so fuel selector, proper tank, belts, harness, fasten, uh, fuel pump on. Okay, so I uh, need to note that. Uh, mixture set. Yeah, that's part of uh, mixture and props are part of my glumps. Uh, gas, uh, gear can come down at 129 um, so I should be well up under that and flaps um, so flaps is VSE I think it's VSE and that's um, 103 okay and I was hoping to get um, some speeds so approach, uh, well, these are speeds, but, um, but I was hoping that it would say, you know, um, approach at 80 knots uh, uh, and over the threshold at 75 or something like that. Um, but I think I am going to, and it may even be in here somewhere um, before starting engine but anyway you guys can see just how just how um, detailed the POH is all right approach approach and landing okay the landing gear may be extended at speeds below 129 uh, knots indicated the airplane should be trimmed to a final approach speed of about 75 knots so that's what I was looking for um an approach oh man i don't know the vs8 the vref symbol for that so i'm gonna have to write approach 75 and um with flaps extended okay um i think that's mm, that might be vs8 no um Shoot. I think uh, I think the one hundred three is maximum. 
it's is maximum flaps extension and then I have to review my VSC but you get the idea. Um, you know, I'm not I have I have I'm not one of those guys that that always look up this kind of stuff when I'm flying. All right. Um and so at least I got that, you know, and yeah, so the POH has provided me with some with some invaluable information and you can see that it's 461 pages so it really is a comprehensive uh set of documents that's um that's always on the aircraft okay all right so let's get rid of this guy oh, guy and um just so you know i've got a a manual for most of the stuff that I'm going to be using that I may not be that may be unique to this aircraft uh, for example I've got a manual that shows me how to operate the E1000 um, I have not been through it <laughs> uh, one of these days I do a flight and I will have gone through all of this stuff um this aircraft has a let's see um uh, what else might it have that that may be a little different let's see i got it paused so that's why that's not clicking off uh i'm not sure the pause and even stop the timer the the um the light let's see because it, it got light anyway even with the pause uh, but one of the things that I was want to say is, you know, I can get manuals for for stuff that uh, that's in the aircraft, like this M803, um, which is this guy right here. I think this is the M803. And this is not a blank um, device. It'll come alive once I add power to the to the E1000. Now, one thing that I have noticed is that when I when I spun in, the E1000 automatically is on, and it took me a little while to discover there is an on off button. Okay, so this is the on off button here. And right now I'm on the backup battery, which is at 55% and counting down. But it will recharge when I add power to the aircraft. All right, so I think I can start this aircraft without the E1000 uh, because, you know, avionics are pretty expensive <laughs> and I don't want to, to damage them. All right, so let's see if we can't get this guy started. All right, so so yeah, let's um, let's start by by making sure our fuel valve is open. That's the first thing I always want to do, and it is closed. So let's put it on the well. Let's turn on our power and find out on our master and find out which tank has the most fuel in it. And I think I put a 20 gallons in both tanks, so it doesn't matter which which tank that I start on. So I'm gonna flip it to the left tank. Okay, and so I got a fuel valve open. All right, so we are cooking with gas. All right, so let's uh, go back out here and we want to go mixture for rich and prop for forward i want to crack that throttle about a half then we want to go ahead and turn our alternator on and we're going to prime it for about four seconds but first we got to make sure that beacon is on okay so 
Um, I think that's going to be on the on the let's see the lights on this aircraft are right here in the middle, and and actually on the pilot on the co-pilot side. Oh wow, what's going on? Get the sim focused. All right, and I want to turn the lights on, which which are right here. So let's see if we can zoom in on that. Um, figure out how to zoom in. Um, there we go. And come over here. All right. So my beacon light needs to come on, which is which is which I normally keep on. All right. Turn it on on my on my alpha yoke. Okay. So we are good to go. Um, and we're gonna do a clear prop. So clear prop. And we're going to clear left. Let's close that back up. It's chilly out there today. And look to the right. And don't see anything out there except for my passenger. Okay. And, and go ahead and prime 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004. And turn our key now the POH actually says that I should have my mixture cut off uh, you know okay thing that I skipped I should have checked my brake make sure my brake was set fortunately it is the POH says that I should have my mixture cut off and slowly advance my mixture while I'm cranking it until it catches and um, but it as you can see it fired right up the way it is all right my alternator is on and let's go ahead and turn our avionics on so there's my avionics bus and this guy that I talked about a little bit earlier that I said it wasn't just a blank thing came alive. Um, my autopilot has also come alive. So I am going to turn the power on the Evolution E1000 and it's alive. All right. Um, one thing that I do like about this, this aircraft is that the power the the breakers are modeled um i just put a dme breaker and you can see it goes off and i really appreciate any developer that take the time to model the breakers because a lot of them do not okay so next thing that i want to do is get my my ASOS or ADOS frequency and that's 119.5 119.5 uh, I'm actually gonna let's see um, let's see let's see if I can't um, go see if I can't leave that up and still show you guys what I'm doing um, and there we go all right and let's zoom in okay so ADOS is 119.15 okay so that's already tuned in for COM2 and I'm not I'm, I'm gonna skip clearance delivery as I always do um, it's just not something that um, that I can really um, replicate um, while I'm flying but and so and I'm not going to use approach and de and, a, and uh, departure and approach either okay so um, ground is 121.9 so let's go ahead and dial that in because that's the frequency we need to be on right now 121.9 all right and most of you guys already who watch my channel probably already know this and 
tower is 121.1. So let's go down to point 0.1 and down to 121. And we got our tower frequency on standby. We got ground active. We got on COM2. We've got our ADOS ready to go. And let's go ahead and put in, make sure that our transponder is turned on. Glad I noticed that. Okay, so uh, mode, I think it's the button that turns it on. And it's on standby. We need, we want that on alt altitude report, even here on the tarmac these days. Okay. Um, our destination, I don't think we have a VOR that's going to really help us um, in that vicinity. But, um, but we do have this Franklin uh, VOR. And that frequency is 110.6. So just in case, uh, for all, you know, just in case, probably wouldn't be a bad idea to have that ready, just in case. So that's um, uh, 110.6. Let's get 0.6. 110 and then 110 and we'll flip that in and we'll go back to the com and even though we're not going to use the 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 VOR the, um, for navigation it's just a good backup uh, because we can see that roughly if we go to that VOR and fly if we go to that VOR and fly roughly um, 85 maybe um, let's see I'm going to soften actually my bad I looked at that wrong let's see if we fly due east so where's that airport oh no actually we're gonna fly We're gonna fly. Uh, come on. So if we fly, yeah, that's why I got my 85. I I, I got lost and went <laughs> and went to uh, Suffolk. But if we fly roughly 80, 85 degrees, um, rather than 90 degrees, then we ought to fly. Uh, we, uh, we ought to be able to pick up our, pick out our destination with Palatich. Okay, so let's stop messing around and get back in the pallet seat. Okay, so yeah, and we've got a good start. Uh, we should be pretty warmed up by now. All right, so let's, um, we got. 38 gallons remaining and we got our V speeds we know where we want our I think now I saw somewhere in that POH that I think it was 16 um, point one that where there was a little range I think on the manifold pressure is where we want and that's important so that's worth actually looking up so give me a second and we'll find that give me a second to find that okay the first thing I did find something and the first thing I see is um, I've got an RPM restriction and what I want to do is is avoid continuous operation between 1500 and 1900 RPMs below 15 inches of manifold pressure okay so I did a search on manifold and of course I see that again that maybe there's a play card in the aircraft that says the same thing uh, let's see if it's um, 
Yeah, I heard that said no. Uh, lane to 50%. Uh, okay, right here. Avoid content. Yeah, so I got that. All right, so let's go to next. And the normal cruise, the normal cruising power is 75% of the rated horsepower uh, of the engine. When selecting cruise RPM below 2400, limiting manifold pressure to continuous operation. All right, that's close. That's not what I'm looking for. I see the word manifold pressure there, so it's going to stop there. Flight planning, uh, manifold pressure outside air temperature, so 65%. So I'm getting it. I'm getting the feeling that we want about um, a 65% rated power, 2,500 RPMs. Then uh, we're looking at 23 on the manifold pressure in cruise. So that's helpful. That was um, close. That was interesting and. Now I've got some reference to where I want my manifold pressure to be at, at roughly about 23. And that should get us there without blowing up an engine or causing the engine to fail. All right, let's go ahead and get our ATOS. Uh, that was on COM2. India. And we got India. All right, so we got India, guys. And our temperature is 3003. So let's make sure that we get that dialed in. And we, we do have a digital altimeter, which helps. And the way that we're going to access that guy, I think we're going to click here and bell, change it to barrel, and then we can go ahead and change it 3003 all right and we got two runways that are active runway 16 and runway 20 so let's uh, let's figure out which one way we want and four flight is a good good way well, I do know I want 20 because that's I came in to Richmond uh, a day or two ago Let's see if we can't get rid of the um, of the ink that I put in. Let's see. So clear annotations. Okay, good deal. All right. So let me just bring up four flight and uh, clear again. Done. All right. That's off. All right. So let me just bring up four flight here and. Um, one six and two zero and looks like two zero is for general aviation and one six is for commercial for the air for the airlines uh, i think these are the gates on the um on this side let's see okay so our tax is going to be tango juliet alpha and we'll take alpha to alpha um we we'll take alpha to alpha. I don't see a number designation on this alpha, um, but yeah, we we'll just take alpha all the way up to runway two to runway zero. Okay, so if the tower gave me that, then I would need to write it down because. I can only remember a little bit at a time. All right, so uh, what I say, we're gonna uh, do Tango, Tango Juliet Alpha. See that I can remember those three letters, and that should take me to the runway. Clear to the left. Clear to the right. And I do have a glance. Let's see. I do have a glance left and a glance right. So 
I just have to remember to start using my fingers on my keyboard uh, to help navigate. All right. So let's roll. All right. So, and we are on our taxi roll. Okay. So, let's go. Um, strobe lights can come on, landing lights can come on, taxi lights can actually go off, or we could have left them on, and nav lights are on, and let's just go ahead and use all available runway. So, we're off the yellow brick road, and um, it is okay to come up here and use as much runway as we can get hold to for takeoff. And we got plenty of runway, so we didn't actually need this much. But there's uh, one guy. I did hear one guy said, "Why leave a why why waste a bunch of good runway in case you ever need it?" All right, so power up the four, release the brakes. It just dawned on me that I didn't put in my flight plan. All right, flaps. I didn't put in flaps. All right, rotate at 60. Rotate. Airborne, positive rate, tap the brake, gear up. And VY was 90. So we want v, VY and 5500 is our, oh man, we're not over the runway. 5500 is our cruise altitude. All right. So. Let's get in. Let's get in the cruise and actually we're not doing a downwind. We took off on two. Twenty. I'm, I'm thinking of two. <laughs> My bad. I think it was going north. We took off on 20. So we can turn on course. So let's get on up to 1500 before we turn on course. And let's put on our head headset, kill some of that engine noise. Don't have to have all that, do we? All right. And let's uh, let's build our flight plan. Something that we really should have did before we took off, so that we wouldn't have to do it in the air while we're looking for traffic. Okay, so flight plan, destinate, um, let's see, there we go, um, took off at Richmond, well, you know, our, our, actually all we need to do is put in our next waypoint, which is going to be sus. Sexy, uh, <laughs> or something similar. Sus, sus, uh, I can't pronounce it, but I think when I put it in, you'll see why. Um, All right, so I am looking for a place to fly to. Whoa. All right, 
I should have pulled that power back miles ago. Do a quick scan for what's going on with the air with the airplane. All right, let's see. Nothing's in the red. Okay, not anymore anyway. And I want Yankee here. So suz suza. Such a, such a, I don't know how to pronounce that. All right. So that's what we want. Okay. And we'll accept that as our next waypoint. And that's what we want to fly to. So let's go up here and do a direct to. And activate that. Enter. All right. So. And let's, uh, let's check. Make sure that that's the the plan looks like it is and let's go ahead and engage the autopilot for that let's see if we can't pop it out I don't know if it'll pop out or not okay so I don't see it popping out um, let's, yeah so oh, there we go all right so it does pop out all right so we so we will engage the autopilot and we want VOR and let's see altitude select is 1500 so that's not right so we hit our altitude button and go up to 55 we're at 4000 now so we do need to trim our um, mixture we, we do need to um, to set our mixture so let's um, power back on that mixture a little and and um, okay so out so let's make sure we get altitude select for 5500 engaged um, altitude hold, altitude select. I believe it's gonna select 5500. Still should be doing about 90 knots. Uh, so let's, where's our air speed? We are at 110 knots. So let's trim our nose up a little bit. Oh, well. I think we're on altitude hold. All right, altitude select fifth. Uh, okay, um, let's do this. Out. Um, let's see if they've got a. Okay, so since altitude select is not in green, I don't think it's gonna grab it. Um, and I'm not sure that, let's see, so get that nose up and go ahead and get up to our altitude, but we may have to grab it manually, so we will keep an eye on it. And let's pop this guy out here so that we can see our manifold pressure, our cylinder head, our cylinder head temp is in the green and our EGT. Let's lean that out. So I'm gonna go full rich. Alright, then I'm gonna pull it back till it peaks. Looking for the peak. There's my peak, and I want to go back to rich. So I'm rich. I'm rich a peak. All right. So we'll leave it there for for a minute until, and we may um, 
check it again once we get in the cruise. Okay, so... So, we're still in climb mode. Um, can lower our nose a little bit because we're at 80 and want to be at about 90. We got 400 to go before we reach cruise. But I'm not climbing anymore. Ha. Huh. Okay, so. So we'll raise that nose again. Um, and let's get rid of this guy. Okay, there we go. And so let's pull it back this way and let's grab that. Let's see. Let's see. Out the shoot that. Well, it's not. Okay. So it did grab it. All right. If I had known that, then I could have focused on some of the other tasks that I'm tasked with. All right. So let's go back to our autopilot, our flight plan, and our desired track is uh, 154. So let's find our heading book and let's change that. Let's see, heading, make sure that this is on heading. Let's change that to about 154. And let's see, there we go. One, five, four. All right. So that ought to put us in the in the general vicinity as we figure out how to engage our navigation. All right. So um, we want to check our CDI. And our CDI is now on GPS. All right, so now let's go to nav mode. And we should be grabbing our course now. All right, so let's see where we are on the iPad. And you can see that we were headed in the right direction, but we were not on course and and I'm not sure that we grabbing our course even now um, in fact let's see so I see yeah we're not because we are turning too far um, nav okay so we're turning back nav GPS okay I didn't have the words GPS highlighted before so even though it was on nav it must have been track it must have been track tracking our, uh, our VOR uh, because we do have the VOR frequency in there but now that we've got nav GPS we should be tracking the GPS like it is um, turning back on course and I was talking about the now GPS and I guess you guys couldn't see that because I wasn't I had the uh, four flap four flight app hiding it all right so it's refreshing to get away from the I love getting away from the stuff that I fly with all the time and learning something new. Um, you know, the difference between an A student and a CB student, <laughs> and I have to put the B in there because I did earn a, a bunch of Bs, is the A student will study the, uh, the documentation and figure all that out and then fly, even in the sim. And the, and the C student like me 
we're, fi- we're going like, oh yeah, well, I figure it out, <laughs> and which I did, <laughs> but um, but one thing that I do like to say, oh man, our visibility is going down like crazy. Um, let's see, I need to get the weather at our destination. And I may be close enough to get it because our visibility just went to to shot. Um, anyway, I was going to say that the C student um, will figure stuff out. The, the L student will try to figure it out and just get it all wrong. So, <laughs> but yeah, uh, if I, one thing about the sim that I do keep in mind is it's not real it's no real it's not any real risk of death so i can take some liberties which i do all right landing lights can go off should have went off miles ago strobe lights nav lights can stay on because uh, our visibility has gone to shot i do have over three miles of visibility, so I'm still in um, VFR flying conditions, so I don't have to uh, worry about turning around. And let's see, so what else do we have here? All right, so our cruise is 104. We are cruising right now at about 114. Um, um, I never adjusted my pro- my manifold pressure and my RPMs. Uh, I think my RPM should be at 2350. So you can hear the, I think you can hear the pitch of the prop changing. Oh, no, no, no. My RPM, let's see. I'm sorry, my RPM should be at 2500. So let me go. I'm changing the wrong one. Grab the wrong. I think my RPM should be at 2,500. So, uh, duh, duh, duh. all right. Let me look and see if I made any notes regarding these these settings here. And this is the kind of stuff that when you fly an airplane and it's your airplane then this stuff is this stuff becomes innate and you don't have to look it up okay so I am gonna leave it at 2350 on the RPMs and that brings my manifold pressure down to 23 22.8 and I honestly don't my my notes are a mess. Let's see. I honestly don't remember where I wanted my I th- thought I read that and wrote it down as I read it. Maybe I read it and didn't write it down. Okay, um V one is V R and because I remember writing down cruise the work in route and all of that stuff I don't know if you guys can see my notes but <laughs> they are crazy okay I should have power at 75% 70, 65 to 75 percent so um, and look at my EGTs, they are off the chart here. So let me adjust them here. All right, still a little, let's see, I think I'm, that was Lena Peak. And this is Richer Peak. So I, I should be able to get a little bit more speed, Richer Peak, but I burn a little bit more fuel. Um, let's look. 
Let's look here. Cylinder head temp, oil pressure is okay. I do need to change fuel tanks. Got a fuel imbalance. Okay. Uh, fuel pump is on. And I should have turned the fuel pump off. Okay. Um, changing fuel tanks. Okay, fuel tanks over here. All right. And then the fuel pump can go off. All right. When I change the fuel pump tanks, I do want the uh, fuel pump on. All right. So. Here's a instrument here. And let's see. What is this? Okay. That's. um. That looked like a vertical trim. I mean, uh, uh, a rudder trim. Okay, so. Now, one of the questions that I ask, that I have to ask myself is, how do I know when I'm at 75% power versus, you know, I haven't seen anything that tell, tell me what power setting I'm on. Um, let's see, my hottest, my, why is that doing that? My hottest cylinder head is number three at at um, 1,228 degrees, um, but that's in range, so I'm okay there. Manifold pressure is 23.9, and I think that's right on the money. I can't believe I didn't write that down. If I wrote that down, then... Well... I'm going to have to get a bigger sheet of paper. Okay. So, anyway. It's time to start thinking about the approach. Alright. So, I want to um, go to Hampton and get my get my information for Hampton share that with you guys okay Hampton and let's see I got a meter here um, so winds are 080 at 3 knots 10 statutory miles clear um, a terminal is 3029 remarks and I think I have on real weather so I should be close, if not dead, on the money with the METAR. All right, taxi waves. I've got um, one zero and two eight, zero two and two zero, oh, and let's see. So back to uh, here, zero eight. So one zero would be the best runway to land on now, this is a class I think this is a delta um, nope yep let's see yep this is a delta no no this is a char uh, an echo so I am going to make my own calls does have a rotating beacon um, so let's see and when they are in magenta let's see when a elco is in magenta versus blue Um, I think the blue. Destination A was is 118.375. Yeah, well, anyway. 
So anyway, I got my ADOS from Four Flight even before I could look it up. Uh, I wanted to look it up, but I got distracted. <laughs> uh, 11837. So, well, and I'm going to come to. So, 37 here. And 118 here. Flip that in. And that's cool. All right. So, I can actually get rid of this. And I'm going to go ahead and turn on COM2. Exactly ah, I'm in range. Wind COM. Visibility more than 10. Sky conditions 31,000 overcast. Temperature 1. 2.0. Altimeter 3006. Okay, so in the sim, anything below five knots is, well, anything below three knots is calm. Hampton Roads Executive Weather. Wind calm. Visibility more than 10. Sky conditions 31,000 overcast. Temperature 1. 2.0. Altimeter 3006. Okay. Anything below three knots one zero one two knots is considered calm. Three to five knots is considered light and variable a light. Um are or even one to five knots can be considered calm if the winds are are uh, don't listen to me, guys. I'm not sure I know what I'm talking about. But, uh, but calm can have, you know, a light one or two knot winds, I do believe, and still be considered calm. But when it's three to five knots and, it's, and the winds are, are moving, then, it, then it's light and variable. Generally, anything over five knots, then you would get a wind direction okay just uh, a tip bit of information there so um, where are we let's look out the window here let's see where we are all right so we are uh, actually probably about 15 20 miles from our destination um, my guess is let's look at the flight plan um, well we're three miles from that and we actually do need to put in our destination uh, K P let me pop that out that'd be easier for me K P should be turning any moment uh, no, we're not going to turn because I don't have that in. KP, I think it's VG. And I'm going by memory. And my memory is crazy. Okay, it is Hampton Road. Okay, good deal. Uh, enter. And 1.9 miles. So we'll be making that turn. And let's start a, uh, a descent. Um about 12 miles out okay so um starting descent all right so let's pop that um this guy out ah oh, shoot so, okay have to click down here to pop it out all right and let's see altitude um let's go down to let's get on down get 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 on down. Let's go down to 16. Actually, go down to 15. Uh, all right. And uh, vertical speed. Down, 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 down. And we'll go down at 500. Pull that power back. And we're not going to take the speed. Try to keep our um, 110.
Now we were at 55 and we've got 10 miles to our destination. So we actually are going to fly over our destination. Oh, you know what? We did not make that turn. Nav, GPS. Why didn't we make that? Oh, well, that might be because it, well, it says it's going to PV, but I'm looking at four flight, and let me just pull it up on this map here. Um, let's see if I can zoom in. You see, we didn't make this turn here. Uh, I didn't mean to do that. All right. See, we are here. Uh, let me get rid of this one. We are here, and we're flying. Uh, we're uh, we're in our delta L space, so we need to take some corrective action right now. All right. So our heading. So our heading. So let's uh, let's switch to heading mode. Um, where's the heading mode? Heading, there we go. And then we can change the heading bug. Let's get over here. And, all right, and then uh, we wanna fly back up north. So, yeah, we'll fly about right there and that's northeast and see how that looks on the on this guy man we are if we hadn't started descending then technically I'm trying to make this larger if we hadn't started descending, then technically we would be too high to be in violation. Um, but at this point, I am going to level off right here. Because software executive is um, trying to see how see I think the I think we actually technically not in their airspace because deltas only go up to four thousand AGL and they're only at the at seventy so that's um yeah, that's four, 40, roughly 4,100 feet. <laughs> and I'm just under 4,100 feet. So, but they generally give you plus or minus 100. So, hey, I am going to say that I'm going to pretend that I'm okay. All right, so I ought to be able to see my destination airport um, but I can go back to my flight plan and say go direct to direct to and activate that alright and I need to get down so let me um, cancel my autopilot. All right, and it's my airplane. And I'm gonna get down in a hurry. Give me some downward trim. Get rid of this guy up there. And I see the airport. And 
I actually want to land right here, right? So maybe if I, oh man, I am fighting to keep this guy, keep my nose down, so I need more downward trim. I don't want to have to fight the yoke. Okay, so I want to land on one two, I believe. Um, uh, let's see. I want to land on one zero. So this is one zero here. But I'm way too high to get down now to even think about landing. All right, let's do a glumps test. Gas. Fullest tank is what I want. Okay, that would be the right tank. And I am on the right tank. Okay. Gas, lights. Strobe lights, nav lights, landing lights, all on. Beacon is on. Undercarriage. Okay, let's see what my speeds are. Uh, undercarriage, I'm below 129 knots, so I can go ahead and drop my undercarriage. And and that ain't, that induce some drag, so let me trim a little bit. And let me uh, let me stop diving at a thousand and try to get down to about a about 500 feet per minute, which is much what the plane prefer. Let me turn off my flight director. Don't need that. And 10 plus 18 is 28. So let me turn back to a heading of about 28. And that should turn me around about 180 degrees. Um, well, I'm flying roughly 120 plus 18 is 300. So, but I'm going to turn around. And still doing glumps. So that was my undercarriage mixture. And prop. And people's oh, okay. People say they love glass, but I'm gonna be honest with you, glass is hard to see. At least for me. Alright, so I think my airport is over here. Oh, there it is. Is that it? Yep, that's it right there. Okay. Thought I went down a little further. I really did. Okay, so, and I wanted 1,500, and I'm at 900, so way too low. Don't have any flaps in yet, but I'm trying to get back up to where I need to be, and get in position to make a landing. This is one of Vertical Sims airports, so that's why I see the blimp out there. And uh, Hampton traffic, error 1089 Quebec is inbound on the 45 for runway zero, for, for runway one zero, full stop. Hampton Roads. Okay. Actually, I'm on right. I'm on a right base. Hampton Road. 
arrow 109-1089Q is on right base for runway 10 4 stop. Yeah, better correct that. Okay, so let's get in some flaps. Got one notch, and let's get turned around and lined up. And we'll call final once we get on final. Um, but right now, I want to fly the airplane. Okay. Um, probably shouldn't be entering the right base, but that's what happened. Okay. Hampton traffic. Arrow 1089 Quebec is turning final runway 10 foot stop Hampton. Okay, so what I yeah, there is my runway. Okay, and 500 to go. All right. Okay, gear down, prop and mixture for forward, and and 74 is what I want. Short final runway one zero. Arrow eight nine Quebec. All right, eyes to the end of the runway. Track that center line. And we're down. All right, some braking action. Approaching runway zero. Enter runway here. And the FBO, I think it's going to be to my left. Okay, so I'm going to exit the runway here. And my plate is not showing me where the, where the FBO is at. See if four flight would help with that. Oh wow, I'm at Virgin Atlantic, the FBO. <laughs> cool. All right. Hampton Rose. Error 1089 Curious. Clear the runway, Hampton Rose. <laughs> Okay, uh, clear runway one zero Hampton Road. Okay, there are two runways here. All right, so let's uh, let's let's set our brakes. Uh, actually, we don't need to set our brakes to clean up flaps, lights, strobes off, landing lights off, taxi lights on, and. Uh, Transponder FL TT transponder and that's uh, on okay that set itself and trim trim looks good okay awesome so guys the the only thing that I really don't really like about this aircraft is the panel is just blah. I mean, it's got the instruments. Love the instruments. Uh, let's see where we're going to park it. But the, but the panel does ha not have any PBR texturing. And I think, personally, had it had the, the PBR texturing, it would be right on the money. Let's park beside this uh, set. What is that, a Cessna? Yeah, let's assess Cessna. I think we got enough room to park and still be off the um, off the runway. Yeah. All right. Okay. 
All right, so we are parked. We're going to set the brake. And, you know, all that flying, I don't think I did a single outside shot. Um, I just can't remember to, sh to, to do the outside looks. But, hey, that's not bad parking. Um, probably could have pulled forward an extra foot or two, but that'll work. All right. So, let's shut down and let's go ahead and use slim, which would be switches. And I tend to always start with lights. So, all my lights are on except off, except my beacon. Um, I was supposed to turn my fuel pump off to, on to land. So, that was a, um, when I did when I did gas, I try to remember when I do glumps and I do gas, I try to remember that fuel pump, but it slipped my mind this time. All right. But through the grace, I was able to land without any issues, uh, even with the fuel pump off. OK, so, um, so I'm doing slim and I I'm still on switches, which um, which in this aircraft, you turn everything off manually so we go here and let's see this guy goes off and this guy goes off and this guy goes off I uh, can't I don't think I can turn the the um, these guys off. I think they're tied, but let's see. No, I don't see a power switch. Okay, so so yeah. Um, and this guy, I don't think has a power switch. Okay, so I think those are the guys that I want to turn off. I think this guy's goes off automatically also okay so yeah all right so let's uh, let's turn our alternator off and so that does it for switches oh, oh yeah this guy can go off and let's lean it so that's SL oh you know what it's S L, let's see, slim. I spell slim. S switches L ling. The ignition. So let's go ahead and turn the ignition off. And then master. Okay. And then master. All right. And that's one way of shutting it down. But even <laughs> trying to do the. The memory aid, I still got it wrong, all right? And then we can turn our fuel off. Okay, so, yeah. All right. And we are parked. And I can let these passengers out. So, let's get rid of our passengers. Um, we still got how much gas? 17 gallons in our right tank and 15 gallons in our left. Uh, so let's uh, let's get them out. Uh, Copilot as Copilot lose the weight, then the Copilot will go away. Passenger one will go away, and passenger two will go away. Come on, not even passenger two. We don't even want you to leave three or seven pounds. There we go. Zero. You guys get your luggage. All right, so you got your luggage, and look at our CG. All right, and we'll put on our, our ground equipment. And we'll open the cargo door and let them get that stuff, which they already got. And we are done with this flight. And we are tied down, uh, at least chalked. I don't see any ties, 
but we are chalked and and good to go let's see now this one let's see I got two remove install ground equipment remove install ground equipment I wonder if there's any difference uh, let's see nope no difference okay so so yeah that does it for this flight I hope you guys enjoyed it and um, we did shave off probably an hour by not doing a checklist, <laughs> um, but yeah, um, I am not known for short videos. Until next time. Y'all come back now, dear.